Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, I'm going to answer the one of the questions which you have asked. Few days back, I have shown you how to load data into warehouse from a local source using Python, which is also running on local. But it was opening up a pop-up for the username and password because of multi-factor authentication. Now you have asked, can we avoid that? Yes, we can avoid that by generating a token. So today I'm going to tell you how you can get that token. That token will be created using the Azure app. We have to register an app on Azure and using that we have to create a token and that token we have to use. So I'll tell you how to use that token and how you're going to run the code. So for today's setup, I'll tell you what I have done. So let me jump onto the app.powerbi.com. App.powerbi.com is nothing but also our fabric. So here in app.powerbi.com, I'm going to open a workspace and the workspace which I'm going to use today is going to be 01 Fabric. So 01 Fabric, inside 01 Fabric, I have a warehouse. The warehouse name is Warehouse 2 and Warehouse 2 is uh, created in this uh, Fabric workspace. Uh, by using the option warehouse and this warehouse I have few tables but in this warehouse I'm going to create a new table on another tab I have already opened that one the script is already ready and I'm going to show you that script and I'm going to create one table and so the script is already opened up here so this create table script is something which I'm executing and the reason I'm also creating this table beforehand that when I'm not creating this table beforehand SQL Acme might not give me the desired data type so I have now created this table uh, and I'm going to load the data into this table sales py2 and I'm going to do it in two go so I'm going to run kind of an incremental load uh, to get this uh, data here inside the Microsoft fabric warehouse so I'm going to load a data with certain rows and then later on I'll come back and again load more data I will have a batch size and all those setup which I'm going to explain to you now before I go ahead and do this stuff on Python, I actually need a token. To, to, to get a token, I need to go to Microsoft Azure and register an app. I'm going to tell you these steps and you can uh, use these steps to generate a token and that token we need to call in the Python script. So you go ahead and create this token along with me and then we will jump onto the Python code. To get the token, you have to go to portal.azure.com. Make sure you have a login there. You already created an account there. If not, ask your admin to give the access. Now, once you have done that on portal.azure.com, you have to go for app registrations. If you don't get that, you can search for app registration. Once you click on app registration, you need to start registration of a new app. And in this one, you need to give a name. You can keep it account in any organization directory or and personal this is what you can keep and then you register with the default parameters rest of the things just keep default i have already done a app registration which is fabric.microsoft.com now when i do the app registration i get few things and please note down these things i need this application id i need this directory and tenant id then Display name is fabric.microsoft.com. Now, not only I need this, but I also need certificates and secrets. So here you have to go and add a new secret. Give it a name and add a secret. And you would be needing this secret ID. Once you got the secret ID, just note it down. So you already noted uh, the two things there and you have noted now the secret also. Now you have to go to the app permissions and some of the permissions are really important here, which you supposed to give. And one of the important permission is Azure storage. And the other permissions are Power BI service and Microsoft Graph. But most important one is Azure service user impersonate you might require a service user i'll just tell you how you get it if you click open on that you will 
if you open this you have a azure storage third in the down and that is what you need so you have to click on this and you will get that added here into your permissions and then you have to come and click on the grant admin consent for your company once you are done with that you are ready to go okay so i have done with all these settings and once i have done this is the token which i can use but to use this token i need to generate a token and for that i need to write down a python code to generate a token so my application with the help of application id directory id and secret has to generate a token and i'm going to tell you that code in the python so let's begin our journey now with python to move a file to lake house microsoft fabric lake house and to do that we will go ahead and generate a token and then we will execute rest of the code to move the file from the local system to the microsoft fabric now token has been created now time has come that we jump onto the python code so i am here on my uh, python which is for which i am using visual studio code or vs code and i am explaining you the code so the code has few parts so first of all i have certain import statements these are the imports which are required here so i have done few of the imports here so you can see now the most important part here is to get the token and there is a code which is here uh, across few lines to get the token and then there are a couple of handling checkpoints which i have taken here which is doing that part i'm going to provide this code to you in a blog so you can take the advantage of that now what i'm doing here is basically i'm writing down a function get access code where i'm giving the application id the application id which you got in your azure sql app client secret again from the azure sql app directory id username is your app.powerbi.com username or portal.azure.com username which is going to be email and the password of that which you are using for azure and your power bi login now we have app id app secret i am assigning them into the uh, variables and then this token url this is really important https login.microsoft.com directory id o o token then to, for token data i am creating grant type is password client id is app id client secret is there resource is going to be https storage.azure.com please pay attention to this one and then we are saying scope is microsoft graph.microsoft.com username and password whatever you have provided we are passing those now token headers is we, is something we need to create very simple thing we have done here is application x ww form url encoded that's what we created we are printing this token if we don't want to print we can comment it out then we say token response which is request dot post these are important uh, calls which we are doing and here we are giving token url created above token data created above then data headers equal to token headers again created above then we got the token dot response dot dict which is json load token response dot text uh, we are getting from there and then from that token response dot dict i am saying get access token here is where i am getting my token so this will return you the token and at the end if you see i am going to return the token there is some exception handling which is happening here and the calling and all those is also happening here now this is the part where we are getting the token rest of the part if you have seen the previous video are pretty much familiar we are going to get the date from the warehouse what data you have then based on that we are going to query the data from the local and then we are going to run that couple of times to get all the data in. now let me show you what data i have in my local and then i'll explain this code so let me go to my local and here in my local i have this table where i have already have 30000 rows but i'm going to truncate and load only a small amount of data here and remember this count which i'm loading 14876 now let's go to the python and let me explain you the code so first of all i got get this access token which i am getting from my above code then i am setting this url which is from where you are going to get the url let me explain you so let me go to my warehouse in the warehouse go to the settings and inside the setting this is your url just copy it copy and use it so this is the url 
again warehouse 2 is my name of the warehouse you can use whatever name you have you have to keep this odbc driver 17 sql server same username is your email password is your password which you are using fine then you have this you can leave these steps they are not used i tried various stuff so i just kept one of them now the most important is this connection string this is this is my sql p uh, by odbc username colon password at the rate server database driver then this trusted connection equals to no important authentication active directory password and token and i have tried various stuff token is the something which is going to work and you have to provide the access token no uh, combination like here i tried some other combination in the code but that did not work out so finally this is the simple thing which has worked out now using this i am going to connect to the connection if you say connection and echo i can even say false echo false means is not going to tell me what um, some message is not going to tell me if i say echo equal to true it's going to tell me more messages now then i have kolyas max of sales date which i am taking it and sales py so first time the sales py will not have any data so it's going to return me blank to handle the blank i'm saying my date is 2018 so that it loads the data after 2018 I'm going to convert and this is going to be a pandas data frame from pandas data frame I'm going to take this max date out into a variable and then I'm going to pass that max date to run a query locally here select star from sales underscore fact where I'm going to run this and where sales greater than max date and then I'm going to run it on local host now when I'm running on local host and this double slash is really important SQL express and the database name and here I will say trusted connections equals to yes because I am using Windows authentication. So this is a trusted connection. Then again, engine as a create connection string, no additional parameter. And I'm creating a pandas data set. And I'm using SQL ACME just because it supports the pandas data frame. So once I get that pandas data frame, again, I'm mentioning these details. No need to mention if the names are pretty different, but I just wanted to make sure that I'm not, I might have used the common names. Again, the connection string remains same. There is no change in that. But there is a change here when I'm creating this uh, engine. So connection string echo false connection argument auto commit equal to true because I'm writing the data fast execute many is equal to true means many at a time it can execute more than one statement. And then this is really important df dot sql df to sql it means it's converting it into sql. So if exists, then type is append, then data types I'm mentioning, these data types are really important and see for the date I'm using string here and that's why I've created my table beforehand. Then index is going to be false, chunk size I'm using 100, 100, 150, 50, that is what is going to work and method is multi means insert multiple statement at a time. Table name is worth something I supposed to give here, so I have to give it here and this is how I'm going to make sure that my code works. Now I've explained you the code that time has come that I should run this code and check it out. What is the data which I'm going to push to the warehouse. So I already have this code written here. This is the code which I'm going to run. So let me run this code. To run this code, I'm going to go to run. Run without debugging. Or I can press control F5. Let me run this. It will start showing the things below. And remember, I am only commented the things in the other one, not here. So it's going to show me certain things out here. Now, the token has come second time. It means it's already um, got the connection, got the date, running the query, and now inserting data into my warehouse, data warehouse on Microsoft Fabric. Okay. So it's going to take a little bit of time and it should be able to load. Now this method, which I found out, I even done a method of sending a file and I've sent the file in the text manner. We have to remember that I've not encoded that. I've sent a text file and that sending of text file was really fast. Comparatively sending the data in the SQL is comparatively a little bit slow. Now we use this uh, fast and multi uh, options to make sure that it become a little bit faster, but comparatively sending data as a file was much faster than sending data this one this is and when you watch the video you will also see that the moment I press the run button the even the file with 30,000 rows got loaded in one go so let this load and once it is loaded then we will go ahead and check 
how many rows we have got we are expecting some 14000 odd rows and what would happen post that is basically uh, we are going to come back again here again query the additional data and going to load it and we are expecting to get 30000 rows by the next go data loading has been finished so let's jump onto the microsoft fabric warehouse and see how much data we got so let's go to the microsoft fabric and i already tested one query so let me open that select count star from sales py2 and let me run this so we got 14876 this is the same number what we have on our uh, sql server which we pushed okay you can match this now let me load more data here now let me see how much the count i have so in my sql fact i now i have 30000 i am expecting additional more data to push in that many rows okay so now let's go back to our python code and in the python code i am again going to run this i am not doing any change to this code the same code should only take the incremental and that's how we have done it and i'll say run without debugging so what it should do now is basically it should run with the additional data and it should all give me and let me scroll little bit up to show you see this is the date which we are asking for and this is the date we have got and now this is the date we are going to use to construct our next statement and only going to sh move the data which is more than that so we already got this date 18 12 31 and more than that data is what we are pushing now there is a token which has been generated now this token will help us uh, without authentication there is no pop-up this time around so there will be no pop-up which will ask you username or password is simply going to take this token with the help of the token uh, it will do the authentication and it will not ask uh, for the username password again in a pop-up so multi-factor authentication which you do uh, so this step can um, help you in automate so basically whenever we do such stuff why do i need a token so basically i can automate the complete process so i can schedule this kind of process to run on a particular time now whether i want to push using this one i there are other options like encryption you have to take care and all those or should i use the on-premise gateway now on-premise gateway is another good choice to have and we can control it the entire stuff from our microsoft fabric service only or power bi service only uh, so that is another good option so these are just alternatives so you know that you know if this thing how this works and what are advantage disadvantage how it's going to work with python or how you can use with other technologies also you can do like curl command and all those also you can go and explore out the things would remain same little bit code change in the technology but you will have the similar kind of stuff which is going to give you the same kind of results so you have to go ahead and try this out so once data is loaded we will match the number of rows and once that is done uh, we will wrap up this video again uh, in this video we are not trying to analyze anything on power bi or sql we have done that many times in this series i'm hoping you are watching all the videos in this series now almost there are 25 videos already in this series meanwhile i when i was talking the data loading has finished so time has come that we go ahead and check the number of rows out just run it expectation 30000 what's going to return 30,000 we got 30,000 rows so my advice would be you go ahead and try this out watch the all the videos in the series and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series thanks for watching this video thank you